Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at how the UK has been affected by deindustrialisation. This is part of Paper 2, Unit B, The Changing Economic World. During the second half of the 20th century, the UK started to go through deindustrialisation. This is a process where a country shifts away from the traditional industrial base of manufacturing. And instead, it moves towards service-based industries such as finance, healthcare and technology. This process was accelerated during the 1970s and 80s. And since the mid-1960s, UK manufacturing has shed more than 6 million jobs. The first reason that UK manufacturing has declined is mechanisation. Machines and new technology have been developed that do the jobs previously done by humans, but much quicker and more efficiently. So there is less need for actual workers. Once factory work was viewed as a highly skilled and specialised job. However, it is now considered unskilled work as it now often just involves pressing a button to operate a machine that is doing a job once carried out by a person. Over the years, this technology has become increasingly advanced, particularly in the automotive industry, with cars assembled by robots and the whole assembly line production process controlled using tablets, as you can see in the images on screen. Our second reason for deindustrialization is the huge amount of competition from overseas. Many firms have shifted production to LICs and NEEs where they can take advantage of cheap labour. This means they can make and sell goods for less, meaning that traditional firms in the UK cannot compete. UK made products are now too expensive and this is not helped because there's been very little investment in manufacturing for many years, so machines are outdated and inefficient, and minimum wage laws in the UK make labour costs too high. Our final reason for deindustrialisation is government policies. Between 1945 and 1979, the UK had state-run industries such as the British Steel Corporation. This meant that declining UK industries were kept alive by government money, despite them being unprofitable. The 1970s saw strikes, social unrest and factory closures and power cuts. This decade was known for being really difficult in terms of the UK economy, with a three-day working week and frequent blackouts. Between 1979 and 2010, the UK saw a period of privatisation, selling off state-run industries to create more competition. This resulted in lots of closures and job losses, such as the UK mining industry, which the Prime Minister at the time, Margaret Thatcher, had almost destroyed. But it was also a time of private investment, and this led to huge redevelopment projects, particularly in derelict industrial areas, such as the London Docklands, which you can see on the screen. The Docklands had declined due to deindustrialisation and ships using coastal ports as they had become too big to travel up the Thames. There's been a huge transformation into a modern financial centre with enormous shiny skyscrapers based around Canary Wharf. From 2010 onwards, the UK has experienced a post-recession economic recovery with an attempt to rebuild manufacturing, investment into huge infrastructure projects, loans for small businesses and encouragements of TNCs to come into the UK. This was needed after the 2008 economic crash, which sunk the country into a deep recession. Let's finish off by thinking about how deindustrialization has affected the different parts of the UK. Firstly, there has been a huge impact on coal mining. At the start of the 20th century, the UK had over 3,000 coal mines, like the one pictured on the screen in South Wales. By the end of the century, there were only 30. And the last working coal mine was Kellingley Colliery in North Yorkshire, which closed down in 2015, making 450 coal miners redundant. Secondly, there has been the decline of shipbuilding. 
In the early 1900s, over 300,000 men were employed in shipyards, concentrated in areas such as Clydeside in Glasgow and Tyneside in the northeast of England. Areas are offered very little else in the way of employment. At the start of the 20th century, half the world's ships were being made in the northeast of England. However, Britain was reluctant to adopt new shipbuilding methods that were being used in other countries. So the shipbuilding industry moved to China and South Korea. In 1983, the industry was privatised, resulting in the loss of thousands of jobs. And finally, the UK iron and steel industry has disappeared. This industry grew up around the coal fields with iron ore and coal being the raw materials needed for making steel. The majority of this steel was then used in shipbuilding. In the 1960s, 268,500 people were employed by British Steel. The demand for steel plummeted with the closure of shipyards and recessions during the 1980s and 1990s. And in 1992, the Ravencrag Steelworks closed, ending steel making in Scotland. In 1999, British Steel merged with a Dutch company to form Chorus, with a UK workforce of around 29,000. In 2007, Chorus was bought by Indian company Tata Steel, and in 2016, Tata Steel announced that it would sell its loss-making UK steel business with a loss of at least 15,000 jobs at sites in South Wales, South Yorkshire, and in the North East. And of course, deindustrialisation is linked to the North-South divide. The effects of deindustrialisation have been felt most heavily in parts of the northwest in Lancashire in old mill towns like Burnley, the northeast in old shipbuilding areas such as Hartlepool, and in former mining towns like those in South Wales. Deindustrialisation has had less of an impact in the south of England as service industries have grown so rapidly here. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on deindustrialisation in the UK. Thank you for watching.